three swarms in one day well technically four because there was also one this morning and this is the first swarm I see them fanning which generally indicates there's a queen in there and then the straggler bees from that swarms in this box because I went back to get them I got the straggler bees and then there was like another 20,000 bees in the same spot that I just shook out now I've got a lot of beehives but I've been keeping a pretty close eye on mine and none of mine looked like they were going to swarm so I don't think they're mine but I had this happen to me back in 2019 or 2020 during cancer year there was like over a two or three day period I caught like five swarms and none of them were mine because I have all marked queens so I, I don't really know I'll just have to wait and give these a couple days to settle down and then see what happens so I'm gonna go ahead and shake this uh, these stragglers into here and uh, just see how this goes this is one of the five swarms that I caught uh, I don't know, two or three days ago one thing about swarm bees when I put them in a hive they all get blank frames swarm bees are the most productive comb drawing bees you can ever get your hands on unlike package bees which are kind of slow drawing comb uh, so that's kind of like one of the things I do as far as like bee management um, so I guess first I'm probably about to say something really controversial and that is I really don't like to get swarm bees um, I set swarm traps in case one of my hive swarms but I don't like to get just swarm bees and swarm bees show up here all the time and the reason why I don't like swarm bees is they're always have high varroa counts they're always diseased it, it seems like it never fails but I guess where I've spent years creating like a perfect bee habitat and because I have so many hives and because I have so many swarm traps with swarm lures in it I'll get you know anywhere from zero one year I got eight swarms in like a two or three day period and they just come from all over the place now I know there's probably people that are going to be like oh it's probably your hive swarming but no it's not because all of my queens are marked and I'll even mark the queens from these swarm bees eventually but you know I got to get them cleaned up for varroa mites I got to get them you know if they look like they got any disease I keep a pretty close eye on them for a few days but um, all the swarms that I've ever caught here have never had marked queens and usually like if the day that I got you know those five swarms I actually checked all of my hives everything looked good just where they're supposed to be but I think what it is is there are people you know it could be you know an, an average bee will fly two to three miles for resources but swarm bees they'll fly a lot farther away um, and so I think what it is is I think there's just so many beekeepers that don't do proper hive management and their bees swarm or or I'll tell you a common thing that I hear and I see it online and I've actually had people tell me this this statement right here just makes me mad they say we're not raising bees for the honey we're raising bees to save the bees and those people generally are doing more harm than good because they don't manage their hives they don't manage varroa accounts. They don't manage disease. They don't care if they swarm or not because they think they're helping a cause when generally they're hurting the cause. But anyway, so this is one of the swarms that I caught. They seem healthy. I mean, as far as they're really vigorous, most swarm bees are. So as far as hive management, if I capture a swarm, they get 10 frames, 10 blank frames to start their hive with on a deep and I just let them draw comb now if I get package bees I will usually do four or five drawn comb frames and four or five blank frames that allows them to you know the queen to start laying right away for them to start building up numbers 
And then when I get nukes, um, you know, I take the five frames that are in the nuke and I add five frames of undrawn uh, frames. Or, or sometimes I'll add one or two extra frames of drawn comb, but, you know, usually around three blank frames, two drawn comb, and then whatever they had in the nuke, which is five frames, to help them get started too. So, um, that's just kind of the way I manage bees. Again, I really don't like to get swarms because they're always, never fails. They're always, they always came from a hive that was not really taken care of. I mean, they swarmed. That tells you right there the hive wasn't properly taken care of. <laughs> if it was properly taken care of, it wouldn't have swarmed. You know, the person could have done splits. The person could have, you know, done checkerboarding frames or any of that stuff to keep that hive from swarming. They could have added an extra box. You know, I've got some of my hives are three, instead of two brood chambers, I got three deep boxes brood chambers because they're just vigorous hives to begin with. And that's kind of the way they prefer it. So I let the bees dictate how I build my hives. Um, as far as like Langstroth hives go. Now I've got these new hives, these new long hives I'm testing. And we're going to see how that goes. But swarm bees, I just put them in there. I let them draw comb. Because a lot of times, um, the year that I got eight swarms, I think only three actually made it through winter. They were just in such bad shape and, you know... You, you treat them for Varroa, you treat them for other disease. Um, one brought American Fowl Brood Disease in here. That was a swarm. Um, I basically had to destroy, you know, that hive. Um, but that's just kind of, you kind of see they're a little confused about how, get, how to get in the hive because... Um, I actually was like, this is a pretty big swarm. I don't know how many bees is in there. Like, the number of bees that was in this swarm is probably would dictate two boxes. If, if the frames were drawn out. But they're not drawn out, so I wanted them to draw the, you know, the frames. So, I got one box. All them bees crammed in there, so they're spending a lot of time, like, out flying in front of the hive. But I... I reduced the entrance because I thought, you know, it kind of looks like robbing in a way when you have this many bees flying in front of a hive kind of resembles robbing, but I don't think it's actually robbing now that I've got the uh, entrance reducer on there. But I'll keep that entrance reducer on there just to kind of let them, you know, get some comb drawn on these frames and that sort of thing. Let me show you another hive just a little ways away. That is from a package of bees, and let me show you the difference. Now, this is another Langstroth alone, or another Langstroth hive, but this is from a package of Saskatraz bees that I put five drawn frames in and five empty frames, and they're building up numbers. But look, the activity in front of the hive is just nothing like that swarm. And I can go around to any of these other swarms and show you that the front of the hives of all those swarms are as active as that other one. Because they're just, they're working. They're working as hard as they can to draw out comb because they don't have any place to lay eggs or anything. And uh, I know that I checked that hive just literally about three or four hours after I put that swarm in there. And they already had comb drawn on the tops of one of the frames like enough for them to get started with. And I would say now they probably got, you know, it's been two or three days, they probably got several frames drawn already. Uh, I'll, I'll check that here in a little bit, maybe, and get that on video. We'll just have to wait and see. I got some other stuff to do out in the bee yard. Anyways, that's all I wanted to do was, one, show you kind of the difference, swarm bees, why I don't really like to get them. I mean, I'm not going to turn away a swarm, but there's so much work for me and eventually I want to get to a place where like, you know, I don't know where those bees came from. I don't know, you know, what, what type of bee they are. Are they Italians? Are they VSH? Are they Saskatraz? Are they Russian? I have no idea what kind of bee they are. Um, and I basically just look at them throughout the year and just kind of see like, oh, are they building comb good? Are they, you know, producing a lot of resources? What's the brood patterns look like? You know, 
Anyways, as always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.